Good evening, everybody. Thank you. So my school, our school is actually situated in uh, North Pine, and uh, the school where I'm, Brooklyn's Primary School, actually was uh, started because of the rapid growth that North Pine actually experienced, because there was only one school called North Pine Primary. But Brooklyn's Primary, of course, uh, was then opened in 1995 with 11 teachers and 460 learners. Currently this year, we have actually exceeded the 1,000 mark. We have 1,014 learners with 33 teachers. And I'm proud to say that we really work hard when it comes to the academics. Uh, we've actually just uh, received four awards for this esteemed test. Uh, and also in sports, we really do quite well. So I'm really fortunate to be at that school. Thank you. Some background. When I first met William, we spoke about the legacy that he wants to leave behind at Brooklands. And it quickly became clear that he had a vision to build a world-class school. And that meant a school where learners embrace 21st century skills, but also a school that has a safe, caring and very inclusive <laughs> culture. So we decided to embrace this vision and build the goals for our partnership around this. And we spoke a little bit about this vision and we agreed that for us, this is not about state-of-the-art equipment or infrastructure, interactive whiteboards or building a school hall. For us, this vision was about the empowerment of people and the people being learners, teachers, the community. It was about shifting their perspective about the role that they can play in the school, making them aware of that role, but also encouraging their active participation in building this world-class school. Thank you. So, uh, of course, we had some challenges at the school, in particular, uh, the fact that we have a very young and inexperienced SMT, school management team. In fact, two of my HODs will be appointed from the 1st of April, my deputy will be, uh, shall I say, will join us the 1st of April as well. And of course, you can see for yourself that the, the whole question of stability was very key and important for us. So when that happens, of course, that will free up a lot of my time to really drive this world-class idea that I have. In other words, we'll make it possible for us to interact with the community, interact with the parents, to work with the children, motivate the leadership there as well. And also, of course, making sure that I'm an instructional leader, which is visible, that can be a resource, provide resources, that teachers can do what they're supposed to do. And most important, we really want to create an environment of inclusivity, a climate of safety, and a culture of happiness at the school. Okay, so just to give you an idea of the three areas that we focused on, we'll speak about these in detail in a moment. But firstly, because William is so busy and so tied down with the operational running of the school, we needed to give him the support to get away from that to be able to drive the strategy. So we we developed what we called hubs, which we'll talk about just now, and we also f put a lot of effort into recruiting the deputy. The second area that we focused on was to really create a presence of, of the school within the community and to have proper awareness and information sharing platforms. And thirdly, we focused on being connected with the community. Thank you. So this hubs basically ensure that there's accountable leadership people that can really drive their particular hub. In this particular case, for instance, we've got there, as you can see, learner management, where we really want to empower our learners, look at their development, we look at their mentoring, uh, also the parents' workshop for them, basically, to get all the human resources together. Another one, for instance, would be to really expand on our after-school programs, sports facilities, and also the culture, the choir, and that type of thing. So these hubs have these, what we call hub directors. Another one works with the safety, the security, maintenance of the school, and ensuring, of course, that there's no um, risk at school. And then that way, that will freeze me up to do exactly what I'm supposed to do, and that is to provide leadership and embed this beautiful program that we have. Okay, so with the day-to-day -day operations being taken care of, 
We decided also within the very rigid framework that the Department of Education sets for us in terms of recruitment, we've put a lot of effort into finding a really good fit deputy. So we spent a lot of time developing a profile and a specific personality and we were able to find a very young, dynamic, hands-on, technologically savvy person who starts first day, 10th of April. We've also um, developed a good induction program which has already started. So we've already started with discussions with this deputy to explain the vision, his role within it, expectations, so that literally when he starts on day one, he hits the ground running and he starts adding value from the get-go. <coughs> The second thing we focused on was we wanted parents and learners and everybody in the community to be proud of Brooklands and what it has to offer and the influence that it has on the learners and really show them all the good things and the good programs that are being offered. So we used different modern communication platforms. We started using the D6 communicator. There's a Facebook page. Newsletters in terms of content and layout were changed. The web page is in the process, so there's, there's, a, there's a design in terms of what needs to be included, so that just needs to be developed and launched. And then th we're planning this year to also launch the first school yearbook. Thank you. So another leg would be to really be connected. And for that, we really want to focus on cooperation. We talk about collaboration, exchanges, interactions. And of course, um, the idea is to inform parents about what's happening. We've realized that in some cases, parents are unaware, for instance, about the code of conduct, not just for learners, but also for parents. Uh, collaboration with the NGOs, our BADISAs, social services, and so forth. And also, we want to bring parents closer by really volunteering. So we'll really set up a database where we can share those groups that can work together. Also very important face-to-face -face sessions, information sharing, knowledge about specific topics at the school. And then of course we talk about connect the world. So we'll start around the school, in our community, in our province, but eventually also connect with schools around the world. Okay, and then just basically what are we taking away? So for me it was challenging in the sense that I've worked in many industries but never in education. So it was a huge growth curve and all the red tape and bureaucracy was fun to get my head around. It really stretched thinking creatively and out of the box so that we can be innovative within the framework set for us. And it was very humbling for me to work with William. He's got such passion and such drive and he literally works 24 seven and always keeps a smile and always keeps the passion. So it was, I feel really privileged and also being able to have small impact on one school, but being able to start somewhere and hopefully build something that'll have a lasting impact. Thank you. And for me, of course, Liesl was very important because I could talk to her about all the, not just the important issues, but the challenges at the school that you can't always share with your senior management in the WCD, for instance, but also the fact that Liesl make it possible for us when we set a goal that we are able to really get it going and really motivate me. But also from the whole process, it was important for me to learn about listening to everybody, particularly with the learners when they complain these days. We have to make sure that we take them seriously. So I think that is very important for me. I listen to everybody much more attentively. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you.